Hello, let's start our year with something affordable but nice sounding. And uh, for this purpose I've got uh, recently released uh, hybrid in-ear monitors by Jade Audio. You probably know that Jade Audio is a sub-brand of Fio. I actually don't know how they decided which product will be released under if each brand probably there is some logic in splitting the product but actually jade audio released a pretty good true wireless model that i reviewed some time ago and uh, this uh, hybrid in ear monitors uh, utilizing uh, 13.6 mm dynamic driver and uh, balanced armature driver was uh, promoted or declared as an updated version of uh, FIOS FH1. So it's uh, pretty affordable, $50 is the price model, but at the same time it definitely have a high potential in terms of sound and let's have a closer look. Package is pretty basic, uh, we've seen that many times, there is even FIOS logo on the back side of it, uh, but front front caption says that it's jade audio so it's basic and minimalistic but at least it's better than traditional 50 dollars packaging inside you will have earphones themselves and a nice fabric pouch with accessories and cable so do we have technical specifications here let's see Wearing construction, guarantee close. Uh, no, I need to to learn specifications separately. Anyway, besides EA3, the name of this model, we will have stock cable and uh, two set of tips consist of three pairs each so basically they are pretty familiar for all whole uh, familiar with uh, Chinese in the monitors market first type and let's carefully unwrap it second one so those with red stems have a wider opening and uh, they allow you to change the sound a little bit and find a proper wearing com comfort. So as you can see, accessory set is pretty good, especially if we took a price into account. In terms of design, they are pretty nice. Traditional ergonomic shape uh, designed for over-the-ear wearing, made of uh, semi-transparent plastic. Uh, they look really attractive. There is a version with a blacker faceplate and uh, bluish faceplate is will be also available so I'm not sure if camera shows that but uh, all faceplates have unique random design with some pattern inside and also there is a caption with company's name but uh, probably camera doesn't show it but I will try to show it on the photo Wearing comfort is uh, pretty nice, they fitting really good into the ear because all edges are smoothed and uh, Fio or Jade Audio did their best to fit the big dynamic driver into the smallest possible housing. So you can see all the internals of this uh, in-air monitors uh, freely. So here is the driver itself, as you can see it's definitely big, there are two pressure relief holes first one and second one so there is almost uh, zero driver flex and uh, its uh, second uh, balanced armature driver is located near the spouts spouts are made of metal they are pretty long so you can see they have proper angle so they enter in inside the ear with uh, right angle providing uh, a bit above average sound isolation there is a protective grill so no derbies will fall inside there is a lip for holding the tips uh, providing secure fit so everything is done on really high level you know comparisons with models by kz are almost unavoidable I can say that they are pretty close in terms of design of the inner part, but uh, faceplate and outer part 
probably looks a bit richer than metal faceplates that utilized by KZ, but of course it's a matter of preferences anyway, and uh, internal design looks also really attractive. Cables are made replaceable, here used two pin connectors and uh, they dis I don't know why, it looks like that they should be used with cable with recessed pins, but here you will have absolutely traditional two pin connector. So as you can see, there is a slight gap between the shell and the connector, but I don't think it's a, some issue. Cable, stock cable is uh, pretty nice, it's uh, better than stock cable of KZ a little bit, but uh, anyway. There is ear hooks formed here, they are color coded, so red one for right, blue one for left. Uh, no memory wire in the inside of ear hooks, but they are holding cable well around your ear. And here is soft cable. It's pretty good, it's almost not getting hard when it's cold outside, uh, it has low microphonics, pretty soft, uh, it looks attractive, if I remember right, uh, Jade Audio declared uh, silver plated copper as a material and here it goes braided down to the regular jack. They are made in the similar style with splitter, here is chin sliders present. Anyway, pretty good, uh, solid and really well built cable and overall I can say that models really looks attractive and you know I'm it's 2020s already but uh, I'm still surprised by how good uh, designed and how well built models you can get for only $50. And of course about the sound, I gave them about 30 hours of burn in and they changed sound a little bit, the overall signature became a bit more coherent and driver overlap uh, became less noticeable, I'm not sure if uh, 30 hours is required, but I spent 30 hours, so after 30 hours sound definitely did change, maybe this change uh, uh, happened a bit earlier. So let's have a player on the table. I can't say that it's uh, required, but for me it seems more organic to pair Fios designed in ear monitors with Fio own player. Of course, uh, probably they created more for something like M6, uh, but anyway, M11 my every day on the go dub, and it's uh, it uh, occupies the top place in my drawer, so it's the first dub I usually pull out of it. Of course you need to you will need to find the proper tips that will provide you the best seal and actually with this in your monitors I use medium sized tips usually I use biggest tips available but in this case they have a really well extended spout so medium sized tips were okay for me and in terms of signature, they definitely remind FH1 a little bit, uh, but they making improvements in the weak spots of FH1. Actually, FH1 was really popular, but uh, I think that EA3 will be also more than uh, popular, despite of different uh, driver count. Uh, they uh, uh, is it different? Actually, I don't remember what how many, many balanced armatures were in FH1, I think that's not th that important now. And by the way, about the specifications, it's 18 ohms of impedance and 108 decibels of sensitivity, so really good figures. So basically it's a V-shaped signature with accent on the lows and uh, accent on the treble, but uh, it's done in a bit unusual way, because accent on the low frequencies is made on the more on sub bass than on the mid bass and actually it was one of the disadvantages of FH1, it uh, lacked a bit of uh, deeper layers of bass and here it's fixed, so bass here is deep, maybe not the super deep but still going deeper than traditional and it has good depth and at the same time the accent here is done pretty politely so bass is emphasized but uh, not too much so it's not probably not a bass heavy model at least to my taste uh, resolution is normal not super resolving but for super resolving bass you probably need you will probably need something like uh, 
a multi-balance armature model, but anyway. So, resolution is normal, pretty good for big dynamic driver, in, especially in the, in the inexpensive model. So, resolution is normal, decays are a bit extended, so it's not super dry base of balanced armatures, it's more dynamic driver. Sometimes it's lacking a bit of uh, more texturing, but uh, it's... Uh, it still stays pretty fast, pretty punchy and pretty dynamic for 95% of cases. And what is most important here, it stays pretty well controlled and it's not sh shadowing the mid base and lower mid, so base st stays on its place. As an example, for the low frequencies, I've got uh, Juno Reactor, Trans Trans Siberian and uh, Actually, I could select every single track by John Rector, by the Prodigy, or any other electronic group that I listen. And uh, to my taste, it's almost perfect uh, amount of low frequencies. Not too much, not too few. Really good bo body, really solid foundation for the rest of the tune, and uh, really good balance between the speed and weight. Because usually, you know, gaining more speed, you're losing some weight, and why? versa. Meads are a bit recessed, uh, but not too much, so they're not sounding too muffled or too veiled. Resolution is also normal. Not superb, not bad, not good. Uh, you know, it's, it depends on the on what we took uh, for comparison. If we took something like Andromeda, of course, the resolution here is just average. But comparing with other models in this price range, it has almost similar resolution and uh, it's uh, more focusing on the macro dynamics, it's more focusing on the emotions, more focusing on the weight, not on the micro detailization, not on the picking every single nuance from the record. And I think it's a pretty good tuning for affordable models because they are $50 segment is not targeted uh, for the audio files with perfect sources, with perfect uh, quality of materials. And these in ear monitors are pretty forgiving, and uh, I think for many people in the audience it will make them, it will be a benefit. And they have a surprisingly good imaginary stage, uh, above average in width and in depth. Of course, stage is subjective, but for me, stage is pretty good. I'm not sure what is. Uh, the so what is the, the reason what giving them them this uh, um, go, good sound stage maybe this uh, whole venting system or maybe because it's because here used uh, Knowles balanced armatures not not the balancing ones uh, I'm not sure maybe it's just uh, matching my preferred frequency response who knows so pretty spacious sound with good layering and with good size of instruments and separation female vocals sounding uh, pretty lifelike and realistic male vocals are lacking a bit of uh, crispness sometimes but it's not a frequent situation too and as an example for the mids, I've got Royal Republic, I like this group, I'm not sure what is it, pop rock or I don't know, something between the pop music, dance music and rock music. If you need a good mood, if you need something really drivey and groovy, I definitely recommend you this group. I like all their albums, I like their video clips. Well, they have style, they have uh, mojo, they have groove, and full steam space machine. It's just perfect example of their music, and uh, it's filled with um, with distorted guitars. But at the same time, they're not sounding uh, super heavy, super aggressive. It's just kind of uh, you know some a bit. Uh, humble aggression, let's say so. So it's groovy, but not too hard or too heavy. And uh, this in-ear monitors deals well with these uh, distorted guitars and all other stuff. 
And treble. Treble has a spike, uh, not big, but if you treble sensitive, probably you need to listen them before buying, because uh, they have a bit more treble than FH1 had, and it was second issue of FH1, they, lack, lack, uh, lacked, they were lacking a bit of treble extension, they were lacking a bit of presence, sparkle and uh, feel or jade added it here. At the same time, uh, sometimes on the rare tracks uh, treble sounding a bit, uh, a bi uh, a bit uh, aggressive, just a little bit, but still it's present. It depends on the record quality, but anyway. But I must admit that treble here has a pretty nice extension. Not superb, but nice. And thanks to the Knowles Balanced Armature, it's sounding more natural, comparing with the Belsync model. So I'm, I'm not sure is it uh, because of tuning or because of Knowles, but uh, I think that it's it's uh, because of Knowles, but that's just my idea. Treble is pretty natural, it's lacking a bit of weight sometimes also, but it's single balanced armature, so it's pretty expectable. But at the same time it's adding uh, crispness, it's adding a bit of clarity and overtone, so really nicely balanced model. And as an example for the treble I've got uh, Maybe a bit unusual track, maybe pretty expected. It's Space Oddity by David Bowie. And I think you know why I choose it, because of acoustic guitar with a lot of overtones going high to the treble area. Of course, uh, for this track required something much more expensive, but these in-air monitors uh, still managed to represent it in a pretty nice and enjoyable way. In terms of pairing, they don't require something superb, they don't require some uh, high-powered source, they don't require something with totally black background. They are really well balanced in terms of tuning, they are really well balanced in terms of level, so with better source uh, they can show additional clarity and resolution. With worst uh, source they will hide a bit uh, issues of the source, so probably they can be used with smartphone, but some uh, uh, upper upper basic level of dubs will be good for them. They are sounding really good with BTR5, with M6 and other dubs of this uh, price range. And briefly about compressions, you know, it's not exactly the compression, but in terms of signature, they somewhat reminds me AudioSense T800 a little bit, also pretty engaging low frequencies with accent and a bit uh, brighter treble, but with uh, good resolution. But of course, T800 do everything better, but their price is $300, so it's six times more expensive, and that's something you can expect. They are utilizing eight balanced armatures, while here we've got a dynamic driver, pretty big one, and and uh, single nose balanced armatures. So few models just to compare. Uh, TRN V90, it's uh, drier, it's more natural with uh, a bit faster and less weighty low frequencies. It's a bit uh, drier and faster on the mids and on the treble, but at the same time uh, treble here is a bit more organic, at least to my ears. KZ uh, ZSX uh, or Terminator also have accented low frequencies, but KZ accent is more shifted towards the mid bass, while here you will have a bit more deeper bass, and accent here is a bit less, in KZ it's a bit bigger. No big difference, but still uh, it's noticeable. And ZSX has a bit, uh, also a bit more focus on the micro detailization, while this one playing on the mids more in macro style, and uh, ZSX has a bit uh, less accent on the treble. Maybe there are some other models, so FH1 by Fio is uh, uh, more focused on the mid bass, and uh, 
bit less extended on the treble, so FH1 is a darker version of these in-ear monitors, while this one is more natural and more organic sounding. And uh, Fio's own F9, it's also a bit more V-shaped and with more accent on the mid bass than on the deeper bass, and here you will have more deeper bass, but uh, F9 is more resolving on the mids and on the treble. But uh, also F9 is uh, is more is brighter than this in the monitor. So if you're treble sensitive, uh, just uh, take it into the account. So it was Jade Audio EA3, nice uh, hybrid in ear monitors with good affordable price and pretty good design. And I think it it will gather a lot of attention in the nearest future. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.